Good evening. Welcome to St. Sebastian Catholic Church. Please rise and join in singing the refrain of our opening song, Christ Be Our Light. Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you. We gather on this, the third Sunday of Advent. The rose candle is lit as a sign of the joy which begins to well up in us as we anticipate the celebration of the birth of our Lord and his return in glory. Until he comes in glory again, we gather to behold him in Scripture and in this blessed sacrament. To prepare our hearts, let us first be mindful of our sin and together call upon him for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartedly in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth springs up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices in my God, my soul rejoices in my God, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be persevered, blameless, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you 
is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. anointed me to bring me glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He said, no. So they said to him, who are you so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some Pharisees were also sent. So they asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. especially during this time of the year as people are doing their final gift buying or maybe starting their gift buying online. And there's all these warnings about identity theft. Make sure the site is secure. Make sure you don't give information you're not supposed to give. The last thing you want done is to have your identity stolen. A terrible thing for those who have had experienced it. I think our readings this weekend speak to us of not our identity being stolen, not identity theft, but rather the surrendering of our identity for something that we're not. In the first, in this gospel reading today, we hear of John again as we did last weekend, John the Baptist in the desert. And the religious leaders are trying to figure out who he is. Who are you? What are you about? And he says, I'm not the Christ. People thought he might be. The crowds were gathering as we heard last weekend. People were coming down to the river to be baptized, preparing for the coming of the Messiah. And many thought, maybe he's the one. There were many others who claimed to be the Messiah in first century times. And John knows that he's not. And he's willing to say that. He's not willing to take on an identity that people wanted to ascribe to him. And they say, are you Elijah? They were expecting Elijah to usher in the messianic age. And he says, no, I'm not Elijah. Are you the prophet? 
And some scholars think it's referring to Moses. And he said, I'm not. John is clear in understanding who he is and who he is. He then follows up and says, I'm the one who cries out in the desert to make straight the way for the Messiah. I'm the one calling you to change. I baptize you with water. You'll be baptized with the Spirit. I'm not worthy to untie his sandal straps. We hear at the beginning of this gospel passage the description of John as giving testimony to the light, but knowing he is not the light. He's the lantern that bears the light. And in so knowing that, John is able to completely, authentically live his life as God called him to, to be the preparer of the way, to announce to the world that the Messiah is coming into the world and that it's time for us to make those changes in our life to prepare for his coming. Sometimes we allow other people to define us or give us our identity. Sometimes we live out the expectation of other people for ourselves and we don't become authentically who we're called to be. The challenge for us in this Advent season is to come to grips with who we are and what that means. Who am I as a follower of Jesus? Who am I in the vocations that God has called us to? Who are we? So that we can be authentically who we must be to properly prepare for the coming of Christ. And we hold on to who we are. As we hear Paul speak to the church of Thessalonica, we're in the last chapter of the first letter to the Thessalonians. And Paul gives three instructions to the community. He says, rejoice always. That seems hard to do, doesn't it? Always. But perhaps Paul's not talking about sentimental feelings of happiness, but something much deeper, which comes from knowing who God is and who God has created us to be. Rejoice always. Secondly, he says, pray. How often? An hour here? Paul says, pray without ceasing. Never stop being in a relationship with the God who created us. Never stop being in a relationship with the God who calls us into existence and calls us to authentically live the life that God has created us to live. And thirdly, to give thanks. How often? In all circumstances. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and be grateful in all circumstances. Those seem really hard things to live out. Always, without ceasing, in all circumstances. And yet Paul is calling that early church to the reality of who they've been created to be as brothers and sisters in the Lord in relationship with one another and to fully come to an understanding of who they now are, baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Paul says, the one who has called you is faithful. The one who has called you is faithful and he will accomplish it. What a remarkable gift for a community to be given, to say that we've been called, each and every one of us as individuals and as a community, to an identity and a role and a purpose and a, and, and a reality of, of this journey that we now live. And that if we're open to that, through our rejoicing, through our prayer, and through our gratitude, we allow God to accomplish that in our life. And then we don't have to pretend to be anything else but who we've been created to be. We don't have to pretend and put on airs and, and look for power and ambition and all these other things that the world wants to set upon us. But like John, become an authentic witness to the light within to the light which gathers us now, to the light which scatters the darkness and destroys death and sin itself. So in these final weeks of the holy season, let us work 
on reclaiming our authentic identity. Let us reclaim the need to prepare for the Lord in our lives by grasping the joy deep within, by praying in a relationship with God that's deep and ongoing, and to be grateful. And we do that wonderfully now as we come to this holy altar to rejoice in what God has given to us in the body and blood of his Son, to offer prayer and worship to God with all the angels and saints that have gone before us, and most wonderfully to give thanks for the life and the call to holiness that we now share. Together we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as God's people, we now bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, may we rejoice that the time of Christ is near. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel alone and afraid, may they know, the, know Christ's peace through compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the retired religious, May they be blessed with support from our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly and the sick, may they find strength in God's embrace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones, especially Lee Galvin, mother of Judy Vargas, Laverne DeFogio, mother of Connie Ness, and Kathy Waghorn, wife of Carl, mother of Katie and Sharon. May they rejoice in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your daughters and sons as we continue in this holy season to with joy prepare for the coming of your son. Until he returns in glory, we come now to you with these prayers and those which go unspoken in our hearts. With the faith and hope you'll hear and answer us through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation to always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we, we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Sebastian, 
And with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, a kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay. Tolis peccata mundi, non a nobis Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Now, so just a reminder, this Tuesday evening from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., Uh, Father Fisher and I will be here in the church to hear confessions. So uh, this Tuesday, a great way to prepare for the Christmas celebration uh, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. here in the church. uh, The two of us will be here uh, for confessions. The Knights are selling their 2021 key card books after Mass today. The books filled with many discounts uh, from many local businesses are $20 per book. Uh, Great last-minute Christmas gifts. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.